Hey everyone, welcome to the daily challenge. Today we are going to make a very simple app with core data. The app will look like after this tutorial. We have a very simple UI table view and whenever we click this button, we can add a new item. Let's say I want to add a new item. Keep watching. And I click save. It will update the table view like this. But if it is just a normal table view with a normal data source, usually is an array of things. Then if we go over the go to home, I will click command shift H and we are going to the background and then I will force quit the app like this. I will double click onto the home and force quit it. Okay? It tells me Exco tells me that your app is terminated. I will pause it like this, okay? And I will go back to the to-do again. If we don't use core data, then this keep watching will be lost. So with core data, we can save our um, entry or what we enter our, our data into core data. It is kind of like a um, object-oriented, um, object-oriented, database okay so let's see how are we going to make this app with core data let's dive right into creating this app i create a new single view application and i will click next okay i will click the use core data uh, checkbox because when we click the use core data checkbox xcode will create some of the features that we will need to use in core data in the app application delegate for us and I will name this app to do just very simple app okay and then I will put it in my daily challenge folder okay so let's make some room over here before we dive into what is core data and all the stuff about core data let's actually set up our app that we will have a table view and we have that button Whenever we click that button, we have an alert view that we can enter some item. And we will see that there's a problem with that approach. And we can use core data to persist or maintain our data for, for good. Okay. I will start by going to the main dot storyboard and choose the view controller. I will go over the side classes and select portrait with compact width and uh, regular height. This means that we are designing the UI for a portrait iPhone. Then I will embed this view controller in a navigation controller so that we have the navigation bar. Then I will go over the object palette, drag out a table view into the view. So I will search for table view and then I will drag it to the view and fill the whole screen. Next, we will want the add button or the plus button on the navigation bar. So type for the bar button and drag one out to the navigation bar. And then I will inspect this button, select that button and go over, over to the attribute inspector. I will choose the identifier to be add. So we will have that plus icon button. If you are familiar with the way table view works, we will need a data source for the table view and also a delegate but in this application this is very simple because I want to focus on core data so we will just have the view controller this view controller to be the course of uh, the the source data the data source of this table view we don't need the uh, delegates because we won't select or do anything else but if you want to expand this application after this tutorials then you can just click the delegate. So I will control drag from the table view to the view application icon, the yellow one, and I will click data source. If you want to have, again, if you want to have the delegate, just do it. Then I will open the assistant editor for this view controller. Choose that and choose the second icon, the two circle over the um, tab bar. Okay. 
And then I will want to have an IB outlet from the table view to the controller, to the view controller. So I will control drag from the table view to the code in the view controller.squiff. Okay. If you do it correctly, then the code, the class on the right should be automatic and view controller.squiff. And I will name this um, table view simply because I, this is a table view. Next, I will have an IB action from the add button to the view controller class and change it into action. The name is add item. Leave the type and connect. Okay, so Xcode will create an add item method for me and then I will put a mark, a primer mark over there to be IB action and over the top it should be IB outlet just to organize our code. Then I will delete the did receive memory warning to just to look the code very clean. Next, I would want to have a data source for this table view. So simply just let's say I have an array of string, right? Mostly a data source for a table view is is a string, an array of something. So in this case, I will have an array of items. Each item is a string. So I will write var items equals bracket string and I will initialize it to nil and I put some mark variables things to organize it. So I will write title equals to do because the navigation control navigation bar controller this view controller has the title property. Next, I will register the UI table view cell class with the table view outlet. And then I will dequeue um, a cell with the identifier cell for this table view. So normally if you have a table and you drag out a UI table view controller, most of the things right here, uh, Xcode will take care of the rest for you. But here we drag out a table view into this. So we have to do it ourselves. And actually it's a good practice and we can just learn this way. Now we will want to make sure that our UI, our view control controller class conforms to the UI table view data source protocol. And the minute we do that, Xcode would yell at, at us because we haven't implemented the table view row, number of rows at uh, in sections and cell for row at index path. So now we will have to implement those two methods. So I will put a mark over there and to separate it from the rest. And it is UI table view data source. So let's write the method number of rows in section for this table view data source. And simply I will return items.count. Now let's write the cell for row at index path for this table view. And in this method, I will dequeue a reusable cell with the identifier cell. Remember that we have to match the cell identif reuse identifier with the re register class over there in the view did or else we'll got an error. And I will cast that as a UI table view cell. Okay. Then next we can just change the text, the text label of this cell text. I will write text cell, cell dot text label dot text equals items sub index path dot row. And then I will simply return the cell. Next. Let's implement the add item IB action method. And in this method, I will allow the user to enter an item so, uh, by prompting a alert, alert view. Inside that alert view, I have a text view. So I will start to type var alert equals UI alert controller title and using that uh, class method. And the title is new item. The message is add a new item and the preferred style is alert okay 
then uh, in the next step I will create a save action I will use the UI alert action title and the title is save okay and it will create a little button below the alert view for me the style is dot default we don't have specified the enum over there this initializer has a completion handler and has a parameter action and this action is actually referred to the type first it is of type UI action question mark or optional okay inside here let's actually uh, have a loop space so that we can work on the code okay so inside this completion handler Next, I will create a cancel action or a cancel button and I will write let's cancel action equals UI alert action, uh, the same initializer of UI alert action. The title is cancel, the style is still default and I don't need the, um, I don't need the completion handler so I will actually put the completion handler as nil. So now we have all the ingredients of this alert view. We have that alert view with a title and a message. We have two actions to save it and to cancel it. Now just um, add those actions and alert and text fields into that action and we will show that alert view. So now I will add the text field to that alert view and I will add the cancel and save action to that alert view also. And then I will need to show that alert view by using the present view controller because that is a UI alert controller and present view controller alert animated true and completion is nil. Then now I will just put some comments into my code so that you later on if you want to download this project you can see the comment now actually we can run the app so let's see how the app is working okay we have that table view and we have the plus button the add button let's click on the add button and add a new item into that so I will add some items into this table view really quick like this. <laughs> okay, let's try to put the app in the background and go back again. We still see the data. But the problem lies in when we force quit the app by double click the home button and then slide it up like that and then we force quit it. Okay, so let's go back to the app. There's nothing over here because simply when we add a new item we add that item into the items array the item arrays are just temporal, temporarily saved or keep kept in the heap uh, in memory in RAM and when the app is force quit everything in the heap is released okay and w at the time all of our data are gone it gone it lost okay so that is the problem lying right there if you want to save the data prop, uh, permanently there are actually several ways the first thing is we can save it in the ns user default the second way is we can save it to some uh, some backend over the internet okay and the third way is to use core 